Welcome to part three of our series on how to build a good OEM unit here. Right now we're going to talk about the reverse input drum. We've done the case, the pump, and this is the next piece down the train to the bottom. Uh, this is going to be second, fourth, and reverse, and some of the failure points on this would be if you have a 2-4 slip or 2-4 that's not working properly. Uh, these would be part of the equation in that gigantic maze of fluid and all those actions that are going on. So this would be the part that will fail along with the band here in the uh, 2 and 4. The reason why is the reverse input drum, this surface houses the band, okay? Think of the drum as a steel and the band as a clutch. So we're using an OEM band because this is what the factory included. A good mod, you're more than welcome to use a wide band. Every performance guy does. It is a great uh, modification uh, part improvement for a stock unit. But there is a big but. As you can see, this band does not utilize the full surface. With miles and time, this drum surface will become concave. Okay, It'll swoop uh, the center inward and therefore will not utilize the whole surface of the band if you put a wide one on because these two sides have been untouched. What we need to do is take our straight edge, our mic, and we need to just make sure this is perfectly flat if we're gonna use a wide band. And it's a great idea to make sure it's very, very flat when using an OEM band as well. So you should not be able to see light. It should be very flush. Try not to get up against the weld. Nothing rides there. Um, it is okay to get your drum machined with just a few thousandths off. One to three thousandths is going to equate to a whole lot in the circumference of the actual drum. So you can't cut five off. You can't cut ten off. But you certainly can resurface these to a degree. Otherwise, um, if it's in that bad of condition, buy a brand new one. They are expensive, but you do need it. Now, there's other things that cause a 2-4 to fail, such as the shift solenoid itself for the 1-2. Uh, the servo assembly general area of that will cause it to fail, pressure leaks, insufficient clearance. Those are things we'll get into later on the assembly of the video and valve body section as well. Another thing you want to keep in mind with this drum, these tabs should not be flared out at all. Uh, and they should be in good shape. These grab the sun gear uh, with a lot of miles, they will see some damage and indents. You want to clear that up or replace the drum. Flares happen under high RPM in low gears. So it's cool to do burnouts for a really long time. But if you're that guy who's just smacking it off the limiter in first gear all the time for 15 minutes straight, that's usually what's gonna flare these out and cause your drum to go bad, even if your surface is good. So things to keep in mind when assembling this piece. Another thing, inspect your piston. This is just aluminum, it can crack. It's very rare, but it is possible. So if you lose reverse, this is a potential culprit or blowing out a lip seal. Assembly, we're gonna put the band aside. And this piece is quite simple, but takes a little bit of finesse and skill because you are primarily going to be using the lip seal disc or lip seal knife, whatever your preference is. This is for beginners. We do our bushings. Very, very, very important. Okay. And you must be gentle with these bushings. Too fast is too bad. You'll never get the pump in or you'll clip the rings on the backside. So both these bushings and every bushing, I can't stress enough in your unit, is probably the biggest mod you can do. So, first thing we're gonna do, and I'll try to do this for you guys to uh, better see. We just wanna run a bit of grease around that outside and a bit of grease around this inside. You don't gotta use an awful ton but if you are a little bit rougher of a person, you may want to use a little extra than me. Again, grease will not hurt your unit. It will dissolve. Now we take our piston. 
we have fluid pushing on the bottom, applying the clutches. So the rule of the lip seal is seal towards the fluid. So as you can see, my seal is pointed this way. And we simply work that into the groove. And just give it a once around, press it in, and this is how we look, okay? Secondly, we have our outer seal, same way. Give it a once around, and this is what we look like. That way the fluid cannot overextend the lips. If you put it on the other way, fluid just blows by it. Now what we want to do is, you probably have a little remainder of grease on your finger. Just put a little around it because you will want some lubrication for that disc. And this part is all about feeling, 100% of it. We are going to then work our piston in there. And what's happening right now is our top seal is sitting on our snap clip ledge. The bottom's not touching. So we want to take our disc with very light pressure with two fingers, be a little savvy, savvy with it, and you will feel it drop just a little bit. At that point, we are touching the bottom. So now what we want to do is go in here with the disc while keeping light pressure on it. You'll feel one side drop and that's what you want. Your next side, you're going to go back, forth, back and forth, and you'll hear that. That little squeaky sound. You're free to pull your disc out. Keep pressure on your piston. That sounds the tight seal of the air escaping through that bleed orifice there, that little hole. It should go in very easy. Never force it just like that. Okay. Now, this is your wave plate. This can break. Make sure it is solid. This is the OEM way. Um, I personally do not care for this because one of the failure points that is rare is it can break and wedge itself down here and prevent the piston from coming up. I do prefer to put it in the other way because then it cannot possibly wedge itself. Um, it's a very uncommon problem, but it can happen and it will cause you to lose reverse. Either way is fine. Again, this problem is very rare. I do not mean to scare anyone. Then we start with a steel. Now, some of your steels may have holes in them, some may not. They are very useless. Your preference in clutches is your preference. Sometimes clutches can vary on application. Red is used for racing, not really for the street. These are just nice carbon composite clutches readily available. So we go clutch steel, clutch steel, clutch steel. And then there are four steels and four clutches. You have wave, steel, etc. And then we end with a dished apply plate. Okay. And then our snap ring, which you certainly can install with your hands. No need for a screwdriver. Clearance is not essential. It should be loose ish, very free spinning. Mine is roughly 30 thousandths because our spring cage that we are about to install is going to push that piston down, get rid of that tiny little couple thousands there gap. Take our snap clip and our special pliers that are straight, and we head over to our spring compressor. And mine is adjustable. You guys' will probably be some sort of screw-on type that may require you to do this without the clutches in. Again, it's not too important. Simply push down flat and firmly, set your snap clip on there. I like to rest my pliers on the uh, crown. You don't want to spread too much. You just want to spread a little. Gently. And you want your opening naturally between 
two of the little grab points on the spring cage. And there you have it. That is our completed, beautiful reverse input drum, ready to go in the unit. We're now gonna put this reverse drum aside. There wasn't a whole lot to talk about here. It's a very simplistic piece. And uh, we're gonna move on to the input drum. That's where the bulk of the transmission begins. Stay tuned for part four. Thank you.